Hey guys, how's it going? Today we've got a few things going on. I'm gonna be primarily working on setting up a fountain out here in the South Garden. Paul and Aaron are working on removing a crab apple in the lawn in front of the Hartley, and then I don't know what else. This fountain project might take me a while because it's a fountain we already have. It's been in storage, it's that Hebe fountain we had underneath the crab apple tree in our front lawn, and then we removed it to do something different up there. If memory serves me though, I, I do remember that it was very hard to, or maybe we didn't even ever have it running. I know we tried to have it running, so I'm not sure what to expect today. We might have to run around and look for parts, but we have no fountains out here in the South Garden yet, no water of any kind, so I think it will be so nice to start adding in some things like that. And we've got a lot of potential uh, locations for the fountain, but I kind of thought there's two really good spots right here. This one would be nice. It would be kind of tucked back. I just am not sure how tall the bowl, it's not super tall, the basin, and it might be a little bit too shrouded by the cat's meow napida, but the Hebe, you'd definitely be able to see her and you'd be able to see water pouring. The other spot, which I'm kind of favoring, is this one right here. We could tuck it right back in here. We've got yarrow that's kind of struggling anyway. I don't know what was going on with that one, but we could dig that out, kind of dig this area put some gravel down and then kind of tuck the fountain right in here. And that might look really nice. Hey, Russell. The only benefit I can see about this side is that this is how tall the cat's meow napida is going to ever be. It won't be taller than this. So it's kind of easy to see like fully what this area will look like in the end. This spot right here, it's possible. I mean, the yarrow can get a lot bigger than this. It hasn't, I mean, I think it's been in here now for two to three, maybe three seasons now, and it's only this tall, but we've got it in other spots where it gets a lot taller. And so it might be in the end, something I would need to move out from out in front of the fountain. Uh, but for now, I think it would work. And they're small enough that even if I need to move kind of this back one here, I think it'd be pretty easy. So we are going to go grab probably, I'm gonna see if Paul can help me with this part. I need to get all of the pieces. It's one, two, three, four pieces. There's kind of a, a, base, a bottom base and then there's the bowl and then there's like a little riser you put inside the bowl that houses the pump and then there's the heavy piece. Also our high today is 87. We had a tremendous amount of wind that came through last night and then it rained this morning. It kind of feels a little bit muggy because of the moisture this morning, but it is just gonna be the most pleasant day. And it's right before another heat up where we have 109 in two days. So anyway, we're gonna enjoy this day. Move some heavy concrete. I'm gonna stop here. I need to get a couple of buckets to put some gravel in. I'll probably do two five gallon buckets. Ooh, also on our way out, let me move the fan. I don't know if you guys can see all the flags, but we do have all of this area flagged off. So we know exactly where the lane's gonna go and Pedro's gonna be here in two days to start with sprinklers. So all this side will be flower bed and grass. This side will be grass and flower bed as well. We've even got the flower bed marked off but it kind of just cruises through here in a nice little curve. And like right in here, we're gonna have grass on either side of the lane and we'll have a bunch of shade trees around the play area. And they still need to come get all this junk picked up. And then right here, it'll go left. The lane will go left and there'll be a giant flower bed right in here. And then this area will kind of open up to a gravel space where we have our high tunnels and then plant storage. Okay. Right in here. This right here is the thing that we put on the ground. And then here's the bowl. And then we put this thing right here. And then she sits on top of it. I'm just gonna load up the bottom piece real quick so that we can get our base all kind of set so we know where it's gonna go. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Check the whole thing for black widows. Clear. Ooh, that was a bad noise. Ah. Here's our pile of rocks. Grab some while we're out here. These junk piles, while I'm excited for them to be gone, have been handy. <laughs> I've used this gravel quite a number of times and the rocks we're still gonna use. We're gonna use them to build up the area for the high tunnel, but like the, the other stuff needs to go. Uh. 
Okay, we are set. Okay, it just dawned on me that I should probably figure out where the closest electricity is. That's kind of important. Probably nowhere out here. Oh, look at the rain did to our grass. Dang it. Okay, we're gonna ask Paul. It might be buried in plants. And it's likely along this back edge, which means we would have to trench an electricity or an uh, extension cord <laughs> a, a distance. And I don't know if we want to do that. Maybe, maybe we want to do that. Maybe it's worth it. So I was thinking of setting up the fountain right here, but if it's going to be a huge pain. All right, guys. So I think we're going to plan B this fountain location because what we just discovered is that <laughs> in order to get electricity to this spot, it has to originate over here in this flower bed. There is um, electrical, an electrical box, and Paul has pulled an extension cord through conduit over to this far corner in order to do Christmas lights in here, but we don't actually have a, a box in here to plug into. So what I'd have to do is go from that extension cord in the corner and trench it all the way over here to this location. <sighs> There's plenty of other spots in the other part of the South Garden where we can position the fountain and I think they'll be a lot closer to electricity. And really we could use fountains everywhere in this, uh, in this garden. So let's go that direction. Okay, so coming into the other side of the South Garden here. Oh, there's a swallowtail on the Superbina. <gasps> let's go, let's go look. Oh, look at that. Superbina is a huge attractor of the butterflies. Anyway, we have electricity right back here, right back by our well. So I was thinking, well, we could tuck that fountain in. Oh, so pretty, look at that butterfly. We could tuck her in right here. And that way we could see, you know, just a little bit of her, especially once things kind of grow up a little bit. There is a cedar I need to stake back this way just a little bit. The only bummer about this, and then maybe it'll motivate me to get planting a little bit quicker, but she won't be as tucked in like from this view. You know, she'll be a little bit perched. We do have an impressionist climbing rose, which I thought died over the course of the winter, but you can see there is some green, well, very little stem down there. And eventually that rose would completely cover up this obelisk. But for the time being, like I won't like to see that right behind the fountain. So it's likely I'll just move this whole operation and maybe I can move the rose to our orchard fence or something. And then I can get some pretty shrubs planted right behind the fountain and kind of cose her in a little bit more. We've got uh, the, Spirea's right in here, of course, all the gorgeous Superbina. These are all uh, pincushion flowers, which would be so pretty with her because they've got kind of a whimsical look. And then there's Russian sage and roses and all kinds of things in this bed. And a little update on the Mangave bloomstock. They haven't opened yet, but they are so darn close. Look at that thing. It has survived all the wind that we've had. Just, just enormous. But the plug-in is right there underneath that fake rock, so I can just do a kind of shallow trench through this area right to this spot, super easy. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to dig out a spot just a little bit wider than the bases that we brought over, and I'm gonna put about two inches or so of gravel at the bottom. That way it makes leveling her up a lot easier. <laughs> Okay, we got our spot excavated. We got the gravel set. I had to go get two more buckets full because I dug it a little bit deeper than I had anticipated digging it. But anyway, it just makes for a nice uh, base for our fountain right here. And you can see that this is where the electrical access is. When we are all done, I will be able to hide that you know, kind of like that, but I got to leave it open for now. We haven't brought the rest of the fountain over yet, but I just wanted to show you some of the pieces and parts I'm going to be using. And I think, I think I've got everything that we need to get this job done. So this here is our pump. This is a 320 gallon per hour pump. There is a little dial on it and I'm hoping it works. I probably should have plugged it in first, but anyway, we will give that a try. We will uh, be attaching this tube to this pump right here and then we'll be attaching the other side to the bottom of our fountain piece. Now where our 
uh, cords are gonna go through the bottom of the bowl. I'm going to be using my drill to drill out two holes. One, so that our extension cord can go through it. Uh, and then the other, so that we can put a quarter inch drip tube through it. So we can feed drip up into the bowl. And I'm gonna start with a two gallon per hour emitter. This zone runs for one hour every other day. So it'll get two gallons of water every other day in the bowl. We might have to adjust that down or up depending, but it'll be nice to have it automatically fill at least every once in a while. And then I've got a bunch of pieces and parts of drip to fix the tube I had to cut in order to get this area dug out. I've also got a level here for our bowl, and then I've got a couple of wedges because it's inevitable. Concrete is not perfect, so oftentimes we have to wedge it up to get it uh, level. Before the pieces get over here, I'm gonna prep our cork. I brought over several bit sizes because this is kind of a large, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to use the biggest one for the extension cord. And then I might be able to, yeah, I can use the one that's currently on the drill for our, our drip tube. Let's go in right here. might be too little i don't know no i think that'll work and then the larger bit for our extension cord just like that and then i'm going to take my razor blade and i'm going to cut access points right here to each hole easier said than done sometimes I think I've done it. Yeah. So basically we just want to be able to open it enough to slide our drip tube through. Let's see if we can. Hold on, I might need to hold it differently. Come on. There we go. We might have to make our hole a little bit bigger. There. See that? Boy, it takes a little bit of muscle to get it there, but we wanna be able to feed our cords in and still be able to have it kind of shut closed when we put it into the bowl, into the hole in the bowl. Okay, whew. Oh my goodness, that's just perfect. Okay, so now this part will be the part that'll be up inside the bowl, and then this will plug the hole, and then we'll feed the cords out through the bottom. And most of the cords, because this is a really long pump cord, I love that they make them so long, but sometimes you don't need the length. And I've got my extension cord all the way up under, and I think it's more protected from outside elements just to leave it all under there. So all of this menagerie will be left underneath. Anyway, it might all make more sense once we have it more set up here, but I'm thrilled with how the cork worked out. And I did double check the size of the hole in the bowl and this cork fits it. Whew, okay. Now we just need to get the rest of the fountain over here. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that's it. Oh, am I gonna feel that? Oh. Okay, so we've got the bowl on top of the base and you can see that I put the cord and the drip tube through the hole and it comes out right here. So now we just need to use a rubber mallet and this thing, what's this called? Uh, nut driver. Yeah, to get this as tightly as we can into oh, yeah. the hole. So anyway, I can do that. Oh, here. Okay. <laughs> and then I've got plumber's putty we'll put around the whole thing. Okay, so this is what the putty looks like right here. And I'm just going to put this around all the joints. And that'll keep water in the bowl. Look at that. Oh, everything better function properly or I'm gonna be really upset. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we need this piece uh, over here is it supposed to get stormy because it kind of looks like it's gonna get stormy oh 
here. Okay. Perfect. Is it centered? I, it looks pretty centered. I gotta go find a cork for this one right here. That's a water drain right there. So anyway, we can at least get this part. Okay, and the... uh, let me get the tubing connected here quick. It just goes right over like that. I'm gonna cut it like here. I might need to cut a little more off. I will need to cut more off. I don't wanna cut too much. Maybe there and then we need the piece. You kind of just get it a little closer. Okay, right there. Okay. Oh, ho, ho, ho. it might work. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, so now I just need to find a little plug and then I'm good to go. Gosh, you guys, she looks awesome right here. Just getting the bowl filled up. I think we're connected. I think everything should work. So in the end, hopefully, we have water coming out this, coming down, and it's probably gonna splatter everywhere is what I'm guessing, but we'll see. Once we know that she's working properly, I'll fix the menagerie of drip and all the cords and such. Okay, moment of truth. Oh my. Oh! Too much. We gotta turn it down. Dang it. I wonder if I could do that by myself. Nope. I can't do that alone. I'm wondering if you could try to dial the pump back if I lean her. Oh, it's too. It's too strong. How do you yeah. dial it back? Well, there's a there's a uh, dial on one side of the pump, uh -huh. but the dial's kind of stuck, so you'll see. Or feel. Yeah. If we need to take her all the way off, we can. You got the top. Uh, I got yeah. the bottom. You okay. get the top. Okay. All right. Ooh. All right. There we go. Okay. So I went and picked up a flow restrictor right here. We're going to try this on the tubing before we go to all the work of swapping out the pump, which I did pick up a couple of smaller pumps that we could try like a 200 gallon per hour. Now this one's 320. And then I also picked up a 120. <sighs> we'll see. I hope that this works. It usually does. I'm going to turn it on. Are you good? Yep. <laughs> Still way too much. I can't, uh, I'm gonna need a pair of pliers to go much more than that. Should we just swap the fountain out or the yeah. pump out? Okay, shoot. So that means we need to take this off. Uh, we don't need to take this off, so it won't be too bad, I don't think. Which size do you think we should try, the 200 or the 120? 120. 120, okay. What is this? <laughs> That's a 320. Oh, yeah. Probably, okay. We're gonna swap the whole pump out for a 120 uh, because I just. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the, in the long run, the best route to take. So here we go. is up and running beautifully. I could not be happier with the placement. I think she's just gorgeous out here. It is the next morning. I gave it several hours to run because I wanted to see if all of our places where we use the corks were watertight and they are, they're not leaking, which I'm thankful for. Because we swapped the pump out and all the pieces were wet, it's really hard sometimes to get a good seal with that putty again, unless you've got super bone dry pieces, but we're not leaking anything. And it's only splattering a tiny bit right now. There are a couple things you can do for that. But let's take a look quick. Look at her. She is perfect. So we've got like mid-morning light here coming in from that direction right there. And I just love that she's kind of tucked back in, but it's very, very visible and provides so much interest, way more than the obelisk was bringing, which you can see I moved that. That's gone. So we'll take the rose out and put something with a little bit more weight behind her. Maybe with something with red leaves, like a 
smaller growing smoke bush or nine bark or something like that, she'd contrast that beautifully. So I don't know if you can see, a little bit of splatter, but water level's looking really good. Just filled it to the top last night. So I'm really thankful for that. I mean, that's several hours of running. I think this is running a little bit differently than it should. I think it's supposed to run into this bowl and then come out those notches, but it almost seems like it, the water would need to go either like straight down with no arc to it whatsoever, or it would need to almost run back on her in order to get into that bowl because it's such a shallow area right here. But I think if it was doing that, it would not splatter as much as it is now. So there are these little things that I think you can get on Amazon. I just haven't ordered them yet. And I think that this might actually help our other fountain by our back kitchen entrance that um, doesn't run quite properly and splatters everywhere. They're almost like a rain chain where you put the first part of the string where the water comes out and then uh, you can put the weighted end down where you want the water to go and the water just kind of follows that string down. So that's one thing we can try. So we would put it right in here and then put the weighted end down in here so that the water would go in there and then into this bowl in the end. And the other thing you can do, which doesn't look as awesome is maybe like a little string that would probably, I'm guessing, become invisible in a fountain of water. You can get a piece of window screen and this is what we used to do down at the garden center all the time. You get a piece of window screen and then put paddle wire through the edges and almost kind of create a little bit of a dome to where the bottom edges are resting on the bottom of your reservoir and then you've got it bent up to where the top of your kind of dome is right at the surface level of your water in the reservoir and you put that right underneath where the water is coming down so it just breaks the water tension right there and it eliminates pretty much all of your splatter. So I'm gonna order those rain chain things so I don't even know what they're called and I will report back to you on how those work out but I just absolutely love her out here. I just so happy. So, so happy with her. Okay, so now let's go check out what the guys did with the crabapple tree in the lawn that's positioned in front of the Harley. Okay, we should be able to tell on our approach the tree being gone. Yep. It was one just right behind this boxwood hedge. It sort of blocked the view of the Hartley. Oh my goodness, I don't even know that I miss it all that much. Oh my goodness. This is a tree that we did plant. It was a Royal Raindrops crab apple. And while I don't love taking trees out, and I know we've done a lot of it around here, I'm also a proponent of the, if the tree is not thriving or if it looks bad or we could plant something that's more uh, well fitted for the area, do that. And this tree, uh, well, let me show you where it was positioned. It was always a pain to Aaron. He's wanted it gone for a long time. So I know he's thrilled right now. You can see right there is where it came out. And so he's had this really awkward piece of grass to mow and the canopy was always fairly low and it had an incredibly weird growth habit. Like it looks different than any of the other Royal Raindrops that I have on the property. And I don't know exactly what was wrong with it. And it was always covered with hard water from our sprinklers because our sprinklers in this area, although they don't look like they're functioning, <laughs> Currently, there are a couple that still uh, are running in this area, which I'll explain in a minute how we're going to fix that. But anyway, so the bottom part of the canopy was always covered in hard water. And I don't know, it was just kind of a weird placement. And Aaron would love to plant something right here that gets really big, like a really big shade tree that we can limb up and then see the Hartley from underneath it which I think in the end is a really good idea. So we will be replacing that tree with something different than we had there. And it was a, I don't know, it was pretty in the spring and that was pretty much it. And usually I like crab apples all year round, but it was just one that never was really quite right. And I don't even know why. So having something that will grow much taller in this space will give us the ability to limit way up. So we'll still have a view of the Hartley. And we do want the Hartley to be cozed in in the end. We want it to be uh, kind of nested into the landscape and we'll still, we'll get that while still being able to see it if we plant things that get, you know, tall enough. So we've got Pacific Sunset Maples at the corner. We're going to repeat two more in front on either side of the walkway. And those get like 35 feet tall. So we can, you know, limb those up quite a ways and still see. So that's kind of the goal for this space. The Royal Raindrops, even if it was a nice tree and we wanted to keep it here, it's not a type that would get tall enough to limb it up enough to see. So it would always be a block 
a view blocker of the structure. And Aaron, you know, he loves his big shade trees. So he was so excited to come out here and pull that tree out. And like I said, we did come through and we drew lines. They're kind of faint at this point. So I'll just kind of point out what we're thinking of doing. We did decide not to do grass on either side of the walkway, which was what I was kind of leaning toward in the beginning. But I just think I couldn't make the idea work in my brain. I just, I couldn't, like I, I liked the idea because I like grass. I liked the idea of having grass in here on both sides. I thought it might balance things out a little bit, but I could not think or visualize what would go around it or how I would make it look right. It would always look like a very forced little itty bitty piece of grass on this side. So we decided just to keep it on this side while maintaining deep enough flower beds that we could still give some sense of balance to this area. But we will also still have that kind of peaceful uh, breathing space, which I think is necessary and important in gardens. Whether that's a meadow or lawn or whatever, I just need to have that. I can't have it be too much of a jumble. I like to have some clean lines every once in a while. It gives me peace. And I know that's a personal preference thing. But what we're gonna do is come from here. That's where the opening's still gonna be. And there is an orange line, but I doubt, uh, I'm not sure you can see it, but it'll come out and then kind of swing in right here. And it's just going to take off a little bit right here. We'll soften this edge here and kind of meet it right where the curve is. And let's see, I gotta, I gotta figure out where my other line is. We'll come over here and then we are gonna take out, I don't know, a good eight, 10 feet of the lawn. It's gonna come all the way in like this. We always struggle with the grass in front of the weeping willow, always. Willows love water, as I'm sure you know. And so we always struggled with it here, even though there are sprinklers that feed this area. Uh, there isn't at this moment, like right here, the sprinkler that was here was uh, capped in order to make the garden around here. And we knew we were gonna be changing where the sprinklers were, so we just didn't bother to fix it. But when we did have functioning sprinklers, we still felt like we needed to drag a hose out here and do supplemental water in front of this willow because it would steal all the water that the grass needed to look good. And we just don't wanna fight that. So if we take the grass out here, move Hebe out so that I don't feel like I have to constantly battle the growth of this willow, I can just let it do its thing. See, she's way back in here. I think it's just gonna create a better feel about this space and I love this tree. I love it. So I really just want to keep the tree happy. I'll plant some water um, why is some drought tolerant plants in here? Russian sage, sedum, grasses, things like that. that can handle uh, drier conditions so that the willow can use the water that this area gets and then the other things won't need quite as much. So I've really overall neglected this area this year. In fact, I didn't even cut back the roses this spring. There's weeds in here. I just knew it was gonna need an overhaul. So anyway, we'll move her out and then we can actually see her. And then what I'll need to do is come through and dig a bunch of stuff that's in here. We've got some grasses, some uh, lemon jade sedum here. Look, I've got a whole mulberry tree growing in here right now. And then we've got a whole bunch of weeds that just, yeah, I just haven't done much. We did come through and cut this back though. Do you remember that? When we cut back the whole honeysuckle, like back to the quick, I mean, I didn't really know what was gonna come of it, but it's beautiful and fresh looking this year. And then we've got some Rudbeckia to move because the flower bed line is going to move out to about here. So overall, we'll be reducing the amount of grass that's in this space, but we're going to, I think we're gonna scrape it all up, redo all the sprinklers in the shape that we need them to be in, and then we'll reseed. That is the plan anyway. We've got so many different things going on. In fact, Chad's crew is here right now. I think they're getting rid of the the piles in the back, Pedro is supposed to be here tomorrow to work on some of the sprinklers. We've got the whole lawn area and flower beds and laying everything out there marked off, painted, everything's flagged. Um, so we're ready to, to move on some of this stuff. I'm looking so forward to it. And you guys, that is it for yesterday's projects. I'm so loving the fountain being out there. It makes me wanna keep going and get the one by the kitchen uh, running. I think that will be so much fun. And you know, we've been talking since that locust is coming out. We need to remove the white lilac that's in the area too because it has slime flux. Um, that whole flower bed needs an overhaul. And I thought, wouldn't a pond look pretty up there? I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> it, would, it would look pretty right there. Oh, here comes Aaron. Scale of one to 10, how much do you love that tree being gone? Oh, you mean the shrub? <laughs> it was kind of a shrub. I, yeah, I kind of, I thought of it more of as like a shrub and it blocked the view of the Hartley. Yeah. It just felt, I mean, I liked the tree. You know, and maybe 
I it just wasn't worth the money having uh, no. Nathan come and try to move it, especially with all the boxwoods. Did you see stuff. the growth habit like in the canopy? It was kind of weird. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. There was something, you know? I don't know. It, it just wasn't a good fit for this spot. So I think that we should actually plant a tree that gets t like 40, 50, 60 feet tall here and actually really? has a nice shade canopy. That's really what you want to plant? Why? Well, <laughs> Big giant shade tree? That's surprising. <laughs> Well, because you can limit up, and then as you're driving through, you can see the Hartley. Yeah. Because I feel like this is kind of like a focal point Absolutely. in the Absolutely. It garden. should be. Mm -hmm. So if you ha you can get the shade, you just got to limit up, you know, 8 to 10 feet. Right. And then you can see underneath it. Yeah. And what are your thoughts on having another pond near the house? I think that's a good idea. <laughs> It'd yeah. be pretty, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. And, you know, not putting grass over on the other side just gives us a more flexibility over in that area as well. You won't miss it once you have stuff planted over there. Right. It looks really barren right yeah. now, mm -hmm. but once you get the trees you were talking about, oh, yeah. like three... Uh, Weeping Alaskans. Weeping Alaskans. Yeah, I was thinking Weeping like groupings. Alaskans? Or the ones that have the... Weeping Alaskan cedars. Is that the one that is kind of airy in between? Yeah. That they go straight out? Uh, you mean like a blue atlas cedar? No. I'm talking like the one on the west side that's like huge and stately and beautiful. Oh, yeah. I was thinking something a little less weepy. Oh, like that... a... The, you know, what's the one that has the... The layered blue spruce? Yeah, is that what it is? A layered blue spruce? Yeah. Would that look bad? No. It'd be pretty. You could get... Could you do three of them over there? Yeah. Do you know how expensive those are? Are they expensive? Yes. You know what? It's a specimen tree. <laughs> it's, a, it's a specimen. Every time I see those layered blue spruces, they're like, what? I don't know. They just, they're expensive. Huh. I wonder if we could just prune them ourselves be a layered blue spruce. Is that what they do? I don't know. Oh. I think so. I don't know. Okay guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and I will report back on the little water string things. In fact, I'm going to order those right now. See you in the next video.